Have you ever found a lens that changes your entire outlook on photography? Yeah, me neither. Let's get into this review. Hi, Kenji here, and today we are gonna be going over my full review of the Canon 50mm f1.8 RF lens. So let's get into it. Now before we jump into the goods and the bads and things like that, let's just go over a little bit more about this lens just so you know a little bit more about it in case you haven't read all the specs yourself. So this is the RF lens and this RF lens is meant to go on the EOS R or the EOS RP for Canon or the um, EOS R6 or the R5. Um, this will not work on any of the uh, Canon Mark or, or like 5D Mark IVs or, or any of the uh, DSLRs. This has to go on one of their mirrorless cameras. Um, this is the Nifty 50. Uh, it's 50 millimeters. It's f1.8 at its widest aperture and it can close down to f22 at its smallest aperture. You normally don't want to go all the way up to f22 um, because it can actually make the images a little bit soft, but it does actually go down to f22, I guess, in case you need it. Now, the minimum focus distance on this is 0.98 feet from the actual front of the camera, um, and that's 0.3 meters. Um, now, now, when I say front of the camera, I'm actually talking about the actual plane of the lens, not the actual front of the actual uh, lens over here. So let me show you what I mean. This is my RF 70 to 200 lens. I'm gonna be doing a full review on that at some point as well. So when they talk about the minimum focusing distance, what they are talking about is not the distance from the front of the lens to the subject. Now let's say the minimum focusing distance is like two feet, or actually let's just say it's six inches, okay? Um, it's not six inches from here out to here. It's not that. What it is, is actually six inches from the plane of the sensor, which is inside the camera over here, out to wherever your subject is. So actually maybe six inches is actually a bad example. Let's just say one foot, because one foot is gonna extend out a little bit past the, the uh, barrel of the lens over here. So if this lens over here had a one foot focus distance, which it doesn't, it's actually around three, three feet or something like that, I need to look that up. But let's say it was one foot. It would actually be one foot from the plane of the sensor over here out to about one foot right over here. So it'd be a distance from here to here, not from here, one foot out to here. So just keep that in mind. So with this lens over here, this lens has a minimum focus distance of 0.98 feet. Now, another thing that, that this has is a 43 millimeter filter thread over here. So if you wanna add a polarizing filter or an ND filter or you know um, a um, I don't know some like some other type of filter on here this takes a 43 millimeter filter now that is an extremely small filter and whatever filters that you buy for this it probably won't work on a lot of other lenses so something that you really should consider is not buying a 43 millimeter filter get a step up ring that goes up to let's say 82 millimeters and then actually have like a nice big uh, filter in the front. So like, let's say like you buy like a uh, neutral density filter, a ND filter as they call it. Well, you don't wanna buy a 43 uh, millimeter ND filter. What you wanna do is you wanna buy a step up ring that, go, that steps up from 43 millimeters and then it basically has a bracket that goes all the way out to, let's say 82 millimeters. And then you can take your 82 millimeter filter and actually put it directly on this lens. And that actually would have worked out really, really well because then that means that you can actually use the 82 millimeter filter actually on other lenses. Like let's say my 70 to 200 lens or the um, 24 to 70 lens or something like that. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is the weight. The weight of this is only 5.6 ounces, which is 
160 grams. So this is an extremely light lens. And we're gonna go into some of the reasons why that this is so light. But being light isn't necessarily a bad thing because when you want to actually have a really lightweight camera um, that you normally get with like mirrorless cameras, you don't necessarily always wanna have a super heavy lens when you're gonna be walking around town all day. It'd be nice to actually have a nice lightweight lens. So having this being um, only 5.6 ounces is not necessarily a bad thing. It can actually be a really good thing. Now let's actually start talking about some of the good things and the bad things about this lens. The first thing that I want to talk about is, let's just go ahead and talk about the good things first because hey, it's a little more fun, right? So this lens over here, the, the one really good thing about it is that it has a nice f1.8 aperture. That's a very large aperture. So if you're used to shooting with zoom lenses that have an f point, oh, sorry, a, a 2.8 uh, aperture or let's say like an f4 aperture, well, you're definitely going to be in for a treat because this goes all the way down to um, f1.8. And what that basically means is that if you have a f2.8 lens that you normally shoot with, this is actually one and a third stops uh, wider. So then that means that it's gonna allow in uh, two and a third times more light than your 2.8 lens. And if you have an f4 lens, then that's actually gonna be like, what, like four, four and a third or something like that times, times the amount of light. So, the whole entire scale with like the f-stops is definitely kind of weird, um, but once you start learning, you know, like where all the different stops are and what actually means like twice the amount of light or half the amount of light, it, it just becomes second nature after a while. So this being at f1.8, this does allow in one and a third stops more light than any 2.8 lens. So that is um, more than twice the amount of light. So if you shoot a lot inside of low light conditions, like let's say in jazz clubs or things like that, f1.8 is really, really good. Now, another reason why the f1.8 lens is actually, or, a, or should I say the f1.8 aperture is really, really good is because it actually gives you a really nice um, out of focus background. The uh, bokeh on this lens is really, really nice being at f1.8. You do get decent bokeh when you have a f2.8 lens that's a zoom and you're zoomed in, um, but this is a 50 millimeter lens, so you're not zoomed in super far with this. Um, so being able to go down to f1.8, especially coupled with having that uh, that that uh, minimum focus distance of 0.98 feet, actually can really help blur out that background really really nicely. Now. The next thing I wanna talk about that's really, really good about this lens is that this lens is $200. Right now you can buy this on the Canon website for $199. And that is a really good price. And that is really what a lot of the nifty 50 lenses have been selling for both for Nikon with the, um, with the uh, AFD lenses and um, e even the um, AFF lens or um, AFS lenses. Um, all the 50 millimeter F1.8 lenses, they've always been somewhere around $150, $200. So this sticking with that $200 price range is actually really, really nice um, because lenses are probably gonna be the most expensive thing when it comes down to your photography purchases. Uh, for instance, this, this lens over here, this one lens, this is the Canon 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. I love this lens. Um, however, this lens comes in at $2,700. It retails for $2,699, and right now you really can't get it on sale. At most, I've seen it on sale for $2,599, so you save a whole hundred dollars on it, but that is a huge chunk of money. So if you really consider that this lens has an f2.8 aperture um, for the minimum aperture, um, or should I say maximum. Uh, this one over here has an f1.8 aperture, um, and this comes in at less than 10% of the price of this guy here. I'm gonna put that down. 
Um, so that's something to really kind of keep in mind, but this is a prime. It doesn't zoom at all. Uh, so if you want to zoom, guess what? You're going to have to walk forward or walk backwards in order to zoom in and zoom out because that's all you can do with a prime lens. Now, the next thing I want to talk about that's really good about this is the fact that it is very small and compact. Um, the barrel of the lens over here is actually pretty much almost the exact same size of the actual rear lens cap over here. If you notice, this rear lens cap is barely smaller than the actual barrel of the lens. Um, so that's actually pretty amazing that, that they kept this, this lens very, very small, even for the huge RF mount that is on the R6 and R5 and well, actually any, any R camera from Canon. So, so I definitely really, really like the fact that this is actually really, really small and compact. Um, it fits into your camera bag super, super easily. Um, and when it's on the front of your camera, it also makes it so that your camera isn't, isn't really like front heavy or things like that. Like it just makes for a very, a very uh, nice compact setup. And let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the weight now. Um, the weight of this guy over here, um, as I said before, it's only 5.6 ounces. Um, and that is actually really, really good because a lot of times when you are shooting with a mirrorless camera and you have it on your shoulder all day long, um, having like a super light lens that, that you can just snap some, some quick photos uh, as you are vacationing and things like that um, is actually super great because with the 1.8 aperture, you can get some really artistic shots with this that you can't get with some of the, the variable aperture, like 3.5 to 5.6 lenses. You can't get the same thing that you can get with a f1.8 aperture lens. So, so this being super light makes it much, much easier and much, like much easier to stomach when I need to think about having this on my shoulder all day as I'm walking around, let's say Disney World, or if I'm like touring around a town all day, if I have this on my camera, on my shoulder all day, I don't think it's really gonna bug me that much. Now, if I had my 70 to 200 F2.8 lens on my shoulder all day long, that I think I would probably pause and say, uh, I'm, I don't think so, I'm probably gonna leave my camera in my room today. And that's not necessarily what you want when you're on vacation trying to capture some really, really great artistic photos, right? Um, so that that is definitely one of the things that I think is one of the great things about this lens is the fact that it's only 5.6 ounces. You barely feel, feel this thing on your camera at all. And hey, when I got this thing, the box is so light, I wasn't even sure that this lens was even inside there. How crazy is that, right? So. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the next good thing about this lens. This being a prime, uh, lens manufacturers are actually really good at making primes really, really sharp. And that's because they can simplify the process uh, because they don't have to deal with any zooming elements. They can actually really kind of perfect and make everything work really, really well just for this one focal length of 50 millimeters. Um, so when I tested out this lens, now granted I'm not like a lens lab where I have all sort of um, all sorts of crazy charts and, and I'm analyzing things with computers. No, I'm just looking at it using my own eyes and I'm and I'm pixel peeping on the computer when I pull the shots in. And I can tell you that this lens is very very sharp even at f 1.8. Definitely in the center at f 1.8, it's very very sharp. Once you start getting to the corners a little bit, um, you do notice a little bit of softening. Um, and then you also will notice some vignetting. Some, so like on, the, like on the corners, things are gonna be a little bit darker. Um, that's what a vignetting is. So you do notice some vignetting when you were shooting at f1.8. And also it's just slightly softer in the corners, but you really don't notice it that much. And in the center of the frame, f1.8, this thing is definitely laser sharp. So it is a very, very good lens. Now let's go ahead and talk about the last thing that I think is really, really cool about this lens. Um, when when Canon started launching all their various RF lenses, uh, something that they always talk about is the control ring, which is this ring on the outside right here. Now this, this outside ring over here turns. 
And when this ring turns over here, on oh, sorry, I'm gonna try to keep it in the center. Um, this actually has dual function on this particular camera. Sorry, on this particular lens. Uh, most lenses, the control ring does one thing, and that is literally the control ring function, which you can customize to do anything that you want. You can have it change focus modes. You can have it adjust the aperture. You can have it adjust so many different things, right? Um, now, this lens, when they designed it, I think probably because they wanted to keep the size of this thing so small, that what they did is they ended up throwing this little uh, switch on here. And you can see that right there. Now, this switch basically allows you to turn this this uh, control ring over here, this can either be a, a focus ring or it can be a control ring. And that's actually really cool that, that you can basically switch it from either being used for manual focus or you can have it be used as the control ring. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, I personally don't do a lot of manual focusing things unless I'm doing macro photography. And, uh, so. I really don't feel like I'm losing out on anything with not having uh, the, a, a dedicated focus ring. So having the ability to still have the control ring and not have, have it take up extra length on the barrel of this lens, I think is actually really cool. Because if they tried to actually get both of them on there, I'm not sure if they really could. Um, and if they did, what they would probably have to do is actually have the control ring here and then the focus ring like right next to it or vice versa and having the two rings literally right next to each other would probably confuse a lot of people and it would actually probably annoy a lot of people and there would just be non-stop complaining about like how can they put these rings so close and um but the compromise is that you have a longer lens so that you can have the control ring out front and then the focus ring a little bit closer right so i think they uh, they actually made a very good design choice with basically just having a switch right here on um, on the front, or sorry, on the uh, side, that allows you to turn it from a focus ring into the control ring. Personally, I'm just gonna keep it as the control ring. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the things that are not so great about this lens. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I wanna talk about is that this is, uh, made out of plastic. Now, I know I said before that, that you know, the weight of this lens being, being really low is really good, and I still stand by that. Um, but the thing is that when, when the actual barrel of the lens, which when it's plastic, it does make me kind of wonder about the durability of this lens. Um, now, the fact that this is a $200 lens, I don't necessarily expect it to be like as rugged as my 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, uh, but it still kind of worries me when there's plastic. So it's kind of like a give and take. I can't have my cake and eat it too. So I really don't think I can complain too much about, about this uh, being made out of plastic because I would rather have this be made out of plastic, like a decently hard plastic, and be only 5.6 ounces versus it versus this being made out of metal and let's say being eight ounces or uh, something like that. So it's just something that I do want to bring up is that this is made out of plastic. So the durability may not be uh, quite as long as some of the metal lenses. Um, but you know, it's just a compromise that Canon had to make. And I don't think it's a bad compromise. It's just something I just wanted to bring up now. The next bad thing about this lens is that there's no weather sealing. So you need to be a little bit careful about that. Um, now for a $200 lens, I don't necessarily expect it um, to have weather sealing, but you know, it's just one of these things where you do need to be careful when you bring this out and it's raining or something out there. Uh, my Canon R6 is weather sealed, but if the lens is not weather sealed, that doesn't really help too much. So definitely keep that in mind. There is no weather sealing on this lens. Now. The third thing is that uh, there's no like stabilization built into this lens. Uh, so if you have an EOS R or a EOS RP and you want to use this lens, well, you can still enjoy a lot of the aspects of this lens. However, you're not going to have any of the stabilization and that could actually be problematic for people that shoot like a lot of portraits. Uh, so you're just going to make sure that you keep that shutter speed up high enough that you're not going to get a lot of blur when you are taking photos with this lens. 
Now, if you have an R6 or an or a uh, R, R5, you're not gonna have to worry because you still get up to uh, seven stops of uh, stabilization with the uh, IBIS inside the R6 and the R5. So with this lens, you still get stabilization on those cameras, but it's through the in-body stabilization, not because of stabilization of the actual lens itself. Now, as I mentioned before, another bad thing about this lens is that there is some vignetting uh, when you are shooting at f1.8. Um, but you know what, most lenses when you are shooting wide open, there is uh, some sort of vignetting. So it's just something that you have to deal with and it's so easy to adjust inside post-processing. It's not really a big deal. And to be honest, a lot of times with my post-processing and the way that I like to stylize my photos, I tend to actually put a little bit of a vignette around the edges anyway. So it's not really that bad of a thing. So hey, maybe that actually should go, in, go inside the good column, not the bad column. Eh, I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the last bad thing. Um, the last bad thing has to do with the autofocus. Um, the autofocus on this is a little bit slow. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually show you uh, live tests that I did with this lens um, to show you basically how the autofocus actually uh, performs and I did it in two different ways because I wanted you to really see the difference between a lens like this which is a uh, much uh, lower grade of a lens compared to my 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens which is an L lens um, so uh, right over here so this lens over here this lens actually has a minimum focus distance of somewhere around like I think uh, three feet um, from, from, of course, the uh, plane of, of the sensor over here. Uh, and so what I want to do was give a comparison between how this giant lens over here with a lot of heavy glass inside here, how fast this, this giant lens can focus uh, from the minimum focus distance out to, I don't know, I think like around two or two or 300 feet away, uh, which is probably pretty close to the infinity focus. Um, versus this one over here. Now, this one, now in order to make it apples to apples, what I did was I put this lens on, um, on my R6 and I did autofocus tests uh, with the minimum focus set uh, to be about three feet away. Uh, that way I can basically test the minimum focus distance on here out to close to infinity and then I put this lens on the camera in the exact same position to test out how fast it can do focusing from something that is three feet away to infinity. Um, so I wanted to show that for comparison. Now, the last test that I wanted to do was I wanted to show basically how this performs when you are doing the true minimum focus distance on this lens. Because as I said before, the minimum focus distance on this lens is 0.98 feet. So just under one foot is the minimum focus distance. Um, whereas the test when I did it compared to the 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens, I actually had the minimum uh, or, or the subject that I had at the near focus distance, I had that set at around three feet. So there is a very big dif difference between starting the focus at three feet and then seeing how fast it can go a focus all the way out to infinity and then back again versus starting truly at the minimum focus distance, which is around one foot, then going out to infinity and then back to one foot and then back to infinity. So you will see a very big difference between how it focuses from the minimum focus distance out to infinity versus let's say three feet from, from the camera out to infinity. So let's go ahead and get into those tests right now.
So we're back from the autofocus tests. Now, as you could clearly see, when the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, which is a very, very heavy lens, and uh, it has a lot of glass inside of it, that focusing from its minimum focus distance out to infinity is, it is almost instantaneous. It is insane how fast the autofocus is on that lens. Now, granted, it's a $2,700 lens, so that's probably why. Um, and then this lens over here, which comes in at less than 10% 10, 10 of that cost at $200, you can see even at three feet out to, to um, infinity, that even that focus was a little bit slower. And then when you look at the focusing of this lens over here from the minimum focus distance of one foot all the way out to infinity and then back to one foot and out to infinity, you see that it is actually a pretty slow uh, focus. Now, like it's not insanely slow, but it is definitely very, very noticeable when you compare it to the, uh, the uh, $2,700 uh, RF 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. So I did want you to actually see that live and not just take my word for it. Um, and you know, feel free to go back and watch it over and over to just you know draw your own conclusions on it. But I think it's pretty clear cut that this lens definitely has a much slower focusing um, motor than than the 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. Um, but hey, it's a lot cheaper, right? So let's go ahead and start talking about my final conclusions on this. Um, the big question is, do you get this lens or do you not get this lens? <sighs> to be honest, like it's $200. And for $200 for this lens, I think it is definitely worth it. And these are the reasons why I think that, that this lens is totally worth it. So. The first thing is that this is a great walk around lens. As I said before, the weight on this lens is really, really uh, low. So like it's not gonna weigh you down a lot. Um, it has a super wide aperture of F1.8, which really allows you to add like a lot of bokeh to your, uh, to your shots, which adds a lot of artistic elements to it. Um, also, if you're gonna be in, let's say really dimly lit bars or nightclubs or, you know, concerts and stuff like that, you know, a lens like this allows you to, to draw in a lot more light and you don't have to crank the ISO up quite nearly as high as you would with some other lenses. Um, so those are really uh, uh, just two of, of the reasons. One is it's very cheap. Two, it's light. Oh, and actually three, um, it, has, it has a very wide aperture. Now, the last thing that I wanna say that you should pick this up even like even professionals should should definitely pick this up um is that it's a great backup lens like if you were let's say shooting um in a uh, wedding or or something like that and you are shooting with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens which is really great for weddings or 70 to 200 lens um and let's say you're shooting and then your uh 24 to 70 lens decides to stop working on you well you really need to be able to handle that sort of situation and having this lens inside your bag is a great backup lens. It's only $200 and you can still use it for a lot of other things other than just having it as a backup lens because it does add elements that you can't get uh, from the 70 to 200 F, or sorry, uh, from the um, 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens. This actually gets more than a stop um, of, of extra light. It gets one and a third stops of extra light um, it does give you more of a blown out background. So this is definitely a useful lens more than just a backup, but it's also a very cheap backup in case you do need it. Another thing about this being the backup lens is that you don't necessarily want a backup lens to be weighing you down all the time. So this being a super lightweight lens um, and it's super compact. I mean, like look how small this thing is. This being super compact and super light this like that pretty much means that you can fit this in almost any camera bag that you have and it's not going to take up a ton of room and it's not going to weigh you down either so that is pretty much like like the last reason why you really should get this lens is as a backup lens for whatever you're shooting so i don't know if you have any questions about this lens specifically i'd be happy to answer them since i actually got it in my hands 
um, go ahead and throw me all your questions down in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out this channel and all your likes and subscribes actually really helps grow it. So until the uh, next unboxing or the next full review, hey, take care. Thank you.